we need to talk. All right, here's the deal. All right, so what do we need to talk about? Right now I'm out here uh, trying to get a meteor shower. I don't know, I've never attempted this. I've actually never had a camera that could even be possible to do this with. So I'm hoping it works out, but either way, I'm getting to get out and be in nature. And I know it's the light is kind of flickering. It's because of my little light I have, little tent light, camp light, whatever you want to call it. I have a little video on that. Uh, I'll put it right up there. If you don't see it, up the link right here, then it'll be down there in the description. Anyway, um, so yeah. Y'all want to just talk for a little bit? As some of you may have noticed, the, uh, oh, wait, let me back up. All right, so it, one of the deals is this video is going to be on Texoma Road Trippers and on Dirty Shoes Adventures. Link up there, link in the description. Anyway, uh, like I said, out here doing a meteor shower, trying to, after reading some more about it, this is not one of the best years for it, but it's going to be many years before it comes back through again. I'll tell you all about that here in a few minutes. But, uh, so many of you noticed, haven't put any videos out on Texoma Road Trippers in a while, and that's because I've been kind of busy. A lot going on. Uh, bought a new vehicle. Been trying to get it to ready to camp and have adventures in, take road trips in. Um, so yeah, uh, been doing a little bit of camping and uh, visited a few parks. If y'all are watching this on Texoma Road Trippers, then uh, link up here, link in the description to the channel. So I encourage y'all, or ask, I don't encourage you, I just ask you, if you haven't subscribed to one or the other, then go to the other one and subscribe to it as well. It would sure help. Um, um, I don't know how often I'm going to be getting videos out on Texoma Road Trippers because that channel is more directed at um, places of interest, sites, uh, events. And as you know, this is wintertime or coming up on wintertime. Uh, so there's just not a whole lot of events going on. We do have the uh, Burns Fantasy of Lights out at Midwestern State University. I'll be going out there here in a couple of weeks, be after Thanksgiving. So, I'll be checking that out. I know I'm kind of rambling, and uh, let's just uh, cut to the chase here. Some of you may have noticed that uh, my other half, hasn't been with me in the last two or three videos on Dirty Shoes Adventures. Um, that's uh, something that she has chosen not to be part of, among a few other choices, but uh, 
It's life. You know, we'll make the best of it. And keep going forward. So anyway, um, with that being said, as Forrest Gump said, that's all I got to say about that. So I hope y'all in. I hope we get a meteor shower. I don't. I don't know. Right now, I uh, got the moon video in. Yeah, it's kind of cool looking. So I'll uh, put that in here in just a second, and uh, then we'll flip the camera up and see if we can catch a meteor. If we do, you will see it. If we don't, then the moon's all you're going to see, because I'm pretty sure I'm getting that, as long as it comes out all right. Anyway, I will uh, talk to y'all later. Y'all keep on keeping on, and I'll see y'all down the road. Bye, y'all. The Leonid meteor shower is one of the most famous of the annual meteor displays. The name recognizes that the shower's radiant point, from which the meteor is seen to fan out, is located within the sickle, the backward question mark star pattern within the constellation of Leo, hence, Leonids, that marks the head and mane of the lion. This meteor shower is caused by Comet Temple Tuttle, which sweeps through the inner solar system every 33.3 years. Each time the comet makes its closest pass to the sun, the traveler leaves a stream of cosmic detritus in its wake. This dense trail of dusty debris can cause a more dramatic meteor storm if the Earth scores a direct hit on a fresh dust trail ejected by the comet. But the comet is not due to pass through the inner solar system again until the year 2031, so this year's Leonids are expected to show only low activity, with at best 10 to maybe 15 meteors per hour. This year's Leonids will also be outshone by the moon. As the showers peak during the pre-dawn hours of Monday, November 18th, the moon will be right next door, just 20 degrees away, the equivalent of two clenched fists held at arm's length. Because the Leonids orbit the Sun in the direction opposite to that of Earth, they slam into our atmosphere nearly head-on, resulting in the fastest meteor velocities possible, 45 miles, 72 kilometers, per second. Such speeds tend to produce bright meteors, which leave long-lasting streaks or vapor trains in their wake. A robust Leonid fireball can be quite spectacular, bright enough to attract attention even in the bright moonlight. But such outstandingly bright meteors are likely to be very few and very far between this year. So, here's the bottom line, if you plan to brave the chill of a mid-November morning and a moonlit sky for the chance of catching a glimpse of only a few Leonids, you should get an award for dedication and just plain spunk. Good luck. Article by Joe Rao of Space.com